Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sara van Grinnen, a.k.a. Mr. VG. And I love talking about statistics because statistics is such a beautiful part of mathematics but misunderstood by most teachers. So what I would like to actually talk about in this video is specifically the calculations of standard deviation. Now, this is in the curriculum, but it's not examined often. But I believe that if you understand the calculations, you'll be able to actually understand where we're going with this. So when we talk about just standard deviation, remember that it forms part of the dispersion tools we've got. If you didn't see this video where I discussed this in detail, please go and look at the previous video. And st standard deviation is to form this barrier around the mean where the majority of your data is going to lie. Lastly, we spoke about this cricket player where a cricket player with a large standard deviation, more erratic, but the person with a small sigma a small standard deviation has a has a more consistent performance. Not one is better than the other. It depends on what you're looking for in your team. Okay, but let's have a look at standard deviation. Remember that standard deviation is about the mean. So I've got to first of all talk about the mean. Remember that the mean is simply the sum total of all the numbers over the quantity of numbers or the quantity of values, okay? So how many values there are. Now, standard deviation has got that formula, okay? Kind of a big formula, and we have to understand certain parts of it. The IEB in a year or two back actually asked part of the formula of um, standard deviation in an exam. That's why I've decided to make this video as well, so that you understand that if your teacher maybe sees that in a previous test, they go, hmm, I'm going to see whether my kids have actually studied this or not. So let's start by looking at this. First of all, it could also include frequencies but I'm not going to look at frequencies specifically because it's the same process just a lot more pt okay so let's say I've got that table which I'm going to use with the numbers two three four four and seven so my end goal is trying to calculate the standard deviation First of all, if you look at the top of the formula, okay, looking at the top of the formula, I've got x minus the mean. That's what I've got there. So I've got to first calculate the mean. So calculating the mean by adding the values, dividing it by 5, because there's only 5 numbers in there, okay, I've got a mean of 4. I did this on purpose to make life a little bit easier for my calculations. First of all, I'm going to take the value and subtract the mean. X, which is my value, minus the mean. Then I'm going to square that, and that gives me the value in my third column. I'm going to repeat this process, taking the 3, subtract the 4, and then square that value. That gives me the second row's x minus x bar, which is the mean and squaring it. And then all I'm going to do is repeat this process. 4 minus 4 is 0. 0 squared is 0. Taking 7 minus 4, which is 3. That's why I get that from 7 minus 4. Squaring it, I've got a value of 9. Now, what does the formula say here at the top? Okay, now you, you will not understand this at this moment, but that little sign there is the sign in maths for sum of. Okay, sum of. 
and we call this capital sigma. So it's sigma with a capital S, okay, which means sum of. So when I look at this, they are telling me I need the sum of the x minus x bar squared. So I need to add these values up, and that gives me 14. And all I need to do is go to my formula and plug it in in the right place. That is specifically the numerator, the 14. What is the n? Well, there are five numbers. So it's actually then the sigma is the root of 2,8, which is 1,67 approximately. Okay, this is not on the dot, so I must actually make, okay, a squiggly equals, okay, 1,67. Oh my, that's a horrible squiggly equal. Oh, okay, but let's have a look now at some magic that I'm going to do. If I've got x bar, and I've got sigma, which is 1,67, your standard deviation and your mean. Remember what I said earlier. This can be used to make a barrier. So I'm going to start with a mean, which is there by 4. Go one standard deviation up, which is at 5,67. 4 plus 1,67. And 4 minus 1,67, which gives me 2,33. If I look at the actual values of the data, 2, 3, 4, 4, 7. Okay? What I'm trying to do is, in between the 2,33 and the 5,67, I'm looking how many of the data's values lie in between them. And there is 3. So if I look at this, in that interval between 2,33 and 5,67, which is one standard deviation or within one standard deviation of your mean, I've got three out of the five data sets, which is about 60%, which is the majority of your data. Remember when we talked about normal distributions? Remember, that's with huge amounts of data. We use the normal distribution. I said about 68%. Now, I'm not going to get 68% out of working with five numbers. But 60%, again, is significant. Because that means the majority of the data lie one within one standard deviation from my mean, which is between 2,33 and 5,67. Absolutely beautiful. Again, can I actually say this is good or bad? No. We've got no clue because we, we've got nothing to compare it against. And only when we compare does the beauty come in with statistics. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of statistics. I know I thoroughly enjoyed it. Please sign in for the next video. This is Mr. VG signing out. Cheers.